DIYers, is your bathroom exhaust fan really loud? Like in my case, it just doesn't work. Well, you're in luck. Let me show you how I'm gonna replace mine today. Now, my situation might be a little bit different than yours, and that is I gotta replace everything. But you might be lucky enough to just have to change yours from inside the bathroom, which would be a great thing, because then you don't have to get in that hot attic and do anything. Or get on the roof. Now, I'm putting in this new tone. It's not sponsored. Well, the room side means if you're lucky enough, you can change it all from inside your bathroom because it's a retrofit. Or it can be for new construction also. That's provided that all the ductwork on your old system matches the new one, which mine doesn't. And when you go upstairs, you're going to see how bajankety mine is. Now, my house was built in 2008, and they did a crappy job of putting this thing in. Also, I think they put too small a one in. And that leads us to the first thing. How do you know how big a unit to get? You can get them in 50, 80 and 110 are the very popular sizes. There might be others, I'm not sure, but at the home centers, that's what I saw. Now, I'm gonna bet they've got a 50 CFM in this one, and what does that mean? CFM means cubic feet per minute. What that means is how much cubic foot of air is exchanged every minute. 50, 80, 110. So I upgraded to an 80, because I measured my bathroom, and it's about 56 square feet. And I think this 50 is too little, because my wife's in here taking a shower, got it all steamed up, even when it was working, it didn't do a very good job. So I'm gonna up it to an 80. Now you can't get too big of a unit, and it may cause whistling and sucking noises if the door shut, and you're trying to vacuum that air out, and there's not enough air to match what it's doing. Not 100% sure, but I ain't gonna try and find Find out. So how do you go about figuring this out? Well, basically, you've got to measure out your room. So as you can see here, this is how my bathroom shaped. I got this nook here where the vanity is, and to the right of it, closet for the other bedroom. Then I got this little nook here where the tub and shower is. And then I got another nook where the toilet is, and again on the left side is the bedroom closet. So how do you measure all this and get the right number? Well, there's a couple things you can do. You can just not worry about these nooks and take a full measurement of the full length of the room and the full width of the room, multiply that and get your number, or break it up into squares, and that's what I did. So I made the vanity nook a square and measured it. I made the bathroom nook a big square and measured it. And then I took the toilet area, made it its separate little nook, and measured that, added everything up, come up with 56 square feet. So like I said, I think 50 is too small for this. If I had a 60, I'd have got it. They didn't, I didn't see one, so I got the 80. And because of that, I'm probably gonna have to cut a bigger hole for this one to go in. Not a problem, I'll show you how to do it. So first, let's go up in the attic and see how bajankity this thing really is. All right, as you can see, down underneath that duct is where my exhaust fan lies. And there's not a thing I can do about that air conditioning duct. It's up as high as it's gonna go. And the other thing, you see how the duct is going away from me, makes a loop and comes back at me? That makes it a little difficult. The nice thing is I got two boards in there in which to nail to, because there's absolutely no way I'm gonna get another board in there in order to screw this thing into. Just not enough room. And the other thing you'll notice is that's a three inch duct and the new one has four. Now I don't know because if this is a 50 CFM, they are just standard three inch or it's just a cheapie and they got a three inch. The other thing, good thing I am changing all this because when they put my AC in, they crushed my vent. All that's coming out. Right there is the roof vent for the toilet. So you can see that vent Goes across, goes under that duct, goes under that AC duct, goes up over that AC duct, and then terminates where my other two exhaust fan terminates. As you can see, standing back a ways, there ain't a lot of room over there to work. And to get there, I had to climb over my AC unit very carefully. Good thing I got long legs. We got a fan and a light set up up here. Fan helps a little bit, it moves hot air, but that's better than nothing. So you can see, we got to do a little work in the attic, and it's not going to be pleasant, as I'm already soaked. Let's talk about what I got here. I already said it's a Brone New Tone. It's 80 CFM, but what I didn't talk about was how quiet this one is. Now, they measure quietness in these fans, whether it's an exhaust fan for your bathroom or your kitchen or whatever, in sones, S-O-N-E. And one sone is equal to about 40 decibels. So what does that mean? Your quiet refrigerator is running at about 40 decibels. So this is 0.7, which means it's gonna be really quiet and I'm barely gonna hear it, and that's perfect. So three things that don't come with this kit that you'll need to make sure you get if you don't have at home are wire nuts for the wires, a grommet for the wire to go through, and then some ducting tape. Now I forgot the grommet, so I'm gonna see if I can reuse the one that's in there. Now I'll have to run to the store and get it. And if you don't have to do any duct work up in your attic like I gotta do, this is gonna be a breeze. Comes with the housing. Now the motor was in here and I've taken it out for now and I'll show you how it goes in. This is where the duct's gonna be and this is your wiring. This wiring little panel slides out. You've got black, white, and green. And your wires come out here. Depending on, so mine's gonna sit up in there like this because the ducting's 
coming out this end. So it sits in here like this. Here's your wiring. Luckily, I've, I've looked up there. I got plenty of wiring. I can bring it over to here. And you got a couple of choices. You can have your wiring coming out the top or you can have your wiring coming out the side. I'm going to probably try and do mine out the side. Then there's this little cover plate right here. And be careful. This is sheet metal and it will cut you. So basically what's going to happen is, is if the wiring is coming out the side, I'm going to leave it like it is. If you want it to come out the top, then you got to punch out this little center piece. It's going to slide into this little groove here and then there's going to be a screw that holds this in and it comes with a little baggie of screws. Now it comes with the baggie of screws to work on this. It doesn't come with the screws to mount this itself. So you'll have to have those. And this is where that little grommet goes. So if I don't have one or I can't use that one, I'll have to go buy one. But you want that grommet, one, to seal this up and two, so that the wire doesn't rub against this metal and wind up cutting it. Now this particular model here doesn't come with flanges on it. It comes with flanges that you attach. They're going to slide right up underneath here. There'll be locks right in here that help lock it in. And what's this for? So when you put it up in there, this flange sits here and your sheetrock will sit against here. And I'm glad this come with it because I'm going to wind up putting a little bit of silicone right here to seal, air seal it when I put it up in there. The other thing is your flapper with your vent. Now this has a damper in it so that when you turn it on, it opens up like this. When you turn it off, it shuts off. You can't put it in but one way. It's got a screw hole right here. So you're going to put this in and then it's going to slide over. You'll put that screw in here that will hold it in there so it can't come out and then your duct will come on here and so this will set up in here like this and the flapper stays closed. Now I will say this flapper isn't real real closed but it's better than no flapper at all. So that's how easy this is and I'm showing it down here hopefully because it may not be as easy to see up there. As you see these little M-shaped clamps or clips here those will go up in there. You have to squeeze these together fit up in that housing and then once it gets up in there on both sides it'll slide up in there and flatten out and it'll hold it up tight against the ceiling. Alrighty this one should pull out just like the new one's going in and it does. Just like that. They did kind of a crappy job of cutting the sheetrock for this to go in. Good thing I got to cut it a little bigger and I want to be careful and not screw this sheetrock up because it's a textured ceiling. So if I had to fix it, I'd have to texture and everything and I don't want to do that. All right, let me go get a screwdriver. There's a couple little tabs I'll need to kind of pry out and pull out the fan. All right, so I got just a couple standard screwdrivers here. Hold on to it so it doesn't fall down on my head. I got it turned off so I'm not worried about being electrocuted. Not a whole lot to this fan compared to what I'm putting Putting back in there and I'm right this is a 50 CFM. It did have a damper on it surprisingly. It does have a grommet. Yay! I took the little cover off, exposed the wires. Next I'm gonna undo all those little yellow wire nuts and get it unhooked and I'll get new wire nuts. I don't want to reuse these. Now if you are worried about getting electrocuted you can always turn the electricity off at your panel and then there's one of the nails there. Pull it and see where else it's nailed in and get it out of there. So it's got little tabs that go into the sheetrock into the wood. So I'm gonna to try and bend this out because remember this was put in as the house was being built. Remember, I got no lumber here and here, so I can't pry or I'll bust this sheetrock all up. Okay, I got this thing out. The reason it was so tough, the new construction fins. Thank goodness they didn't have nails in them. So I basically had to just bend the snot out of it to get it out of there. And as you see, the ductwork came off. And so I'm going to guess, since this is a small little hole in a 50 CFM, that the 50s only comes three inch. Got the little grommet out. Yay. Now the board they have here to nail to has one nail because it can rotate this way. I didn't want to do this up in the attic. But I think I'm going to go up, take that nail out, take this board out and make this so that my duct can run that way. So it is possible to get this out. It is possible to do it from this side if your duct works all good. When I went up here in the attic and was doing this to start and moving the insulation away, I could feel cold air. And it's because of this janky cut they got and it's not sealed around here. So I'm going to try and do something to seal that up. Okay, as you can see, we got it out. I got this cross brace out here. It's gone. You can see I got the insulation pushed back and there was one nail right over here that was holding. We're going to take that out once we cut this. And so this is cut as best as it can be. I can't come over here because it'll be in the center of this joist. So I'm stuck with what I've got and hopefully my cover will overlap it just like it did before. But I am going to take it back this way a little bit so that this is square and take it this way and that way. And how we do that is we set this up here and trace around it. Now you got to make sure you put it the direction you're going to have this thing sitting. You can see I was originally going to take it clear to here. Got it to here. I'm going to cut this line that takes out and makes it square and then this direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 
take Olfa knife, cut along my pencil line. I could take a drywall saw and do it, but again, I don't want to tear this up and have to patch it. Another thing by doing this, it cuts the paper and it cuts my texture. Thank goodness there's no sheetrock screws in any of this, and there's none right here because I can see it moving. If I didn't have a textured ceiling, I'd put sheetrock screws in there. I wouldn't worry about this, and I would mud it and fix it, but that ain't the case because you got to remember, none of this is supported, so you could easily bust this out, and then you're really screwed down. And it's only a half inch drywall. It's not that bad. We're all cut out. Now let's see if it fits. Okay, it took a little trimming on these two sides to get it to fit. And what I needed it to do, I need these ribs here, these folded over ribs to fit up in there. Like I say, there's nothing I can do here because they screwed up when they cut it. But everywhere else, it looks beautiful. And my ceiling joists are only two by sixes. Don't ask me, I guess it was code. So I'm gonna go see if I got a two by six. I need at least a two by six to go across here. So I got two points to screw to. And these little fins here, if it's not, if it's a retrofit, you fold these over. And I will, I just left them for right now. Okay, so here's what I've done. I did have a two by six, and I used the two by four that was in there because it fit beautifully as a pattern. And I'm just gonna do pocket holes. What you're supposed to have is a screw or a nail per two inches of lumber. So I should have three. But for what this is holding up, two's gonna be fine. Gonna try and do all of this from down here. We'll see how well that works. And I'm just using three inch exterior screws. Gotta have this sitting even with my sheetrock. I'm gonna go ahead and put a sheetrock screw here and here. It'll be hidden, but I'm gonna do it. So if you remember these tabs we had, my ductwork goes this direction. This tab's gonna be fine. I got a board that runs here and a board that runs here. So for this tab here, I just took a pair of pliers and bent it over and then just tapped it down. Very, very easy. So we're gonna get this up in there. Then I'm gonna put this skirting on, or at least that's the plan. Let me get the other one on. We'll get some screws and we'll get this thing buttoned up. So I got a little head on myself and had to pull it back out and had a little oopsie and I'll show you that in a minute. Originally it was gonna come in through the side on the wire, but because of how I'm redoing it, it's gonna come through the top. So a little metal piece that was in here, I just popped that out. Then the grommet from the old one, I put back in here. So I forgot we gotta wire it up before I put that in there. And then when I put it in here, I didn't have enough slack here when I pushed it up in it popped the sheetrock as you can see here so the only thing I knew to do there's nothing I could do other than take it out put a whole new piece in or put a board in I mean a lot of work to just try and fix it and make it look right so instead I got this flex ducting tape here and I put around all the edges and then wrapped it up over the top to try and seal it back down and I cut a little bit off of the ends of each of these and stripped them a little more. Got my grommet in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this cover on here and screw it in. My duct goes that way. Put these wires through the grommets. Go ahead and get this up in here. Then we just wire everything up. Black to black, white to white, and green to copper. Now this is braided wire here, and that's solid wire. And I pulled more insulation off so I had more wire to wrap around here. And wrap it around, grab a wire nut, twist it till it's tight. And you should be able to pull on the wires and they not come out. Alrighty, I just folded the wires over and put that all back up in there. Fits real nice and neat. Got to have a little screw that goes in here. Get that put in. Now I'm going to put my little border around, some caulking hopefully, and put it up in there and get it nailed up in there. Now I'll show you there's certain holes you do not put screws in because those holes are for putting the... Uh, fan in. I'm just using an inch and a quarter exterior screws is all I'm using. Get this pushed up in here. Couple on this side and we'll have this all in. So I got late yesterday and had stopped. So we're back at it today. Now, one thing I forgot to do and I did off camera that I said I was gonna do is when I put this in, I was gonna put caulking in there and seal it. And when I first was doing that, I didn't show you that. So I wound up taking the screws back out, dropping this down, running caulking all the way around, putting it back up in there and screwing it in and then wiping the caulking in to seal that up. I wound up putting the fan in and see how everything fits and had the lid on and marked where the lid goes. As you can see, these pencil marks all the way around. That's where the lid covers. Then I took this flex ducting tape and sealed around those edges. I'm just trying to seal this up and make it as airtight as possible so that one, no air is sucking around the vent itself instead of through it. And two, so I'm not leaking cold air up into my attic like I was before. Now I know there's gonna be some leakage through the damper in this vent, but it's gonna leak into my ducting and I'm gonna show you how that's gonna help. But there's nothing I can do about that. So I've got this tightened up as much as it can be. And I'm gonna show you the ducting I'm gonna use. I'm gonna try and feed the ducting through here, put everything together, the ducting work all in from inside here, put it up in there, and then 
we'll go see how I'm going to do it to vent it out the roof to try and stay out of the attic as much as possible. This would have been much nicer if I'd have done this early spring, late fall, or in the winter because then it wouldn't have been hot up in the attic. But it didn't break then, so here we are. So here's a section of the ducting that was on there, and it's just three inch, and you can see it's this flexible, expandable duct work that they put up in here. This is where it was crushed by the AC guys. Anyhow, they wound up just stretching this all the way out. In fact, they had to use three sections to get it from where it is, clear across the house, and to vent it up into the roof like they did. But I'm replacing it with something much better. What I'm going to use is four inch insulated ducting. The insulation on this makes it an R8. So I got this 25 footer and that's okay because what's left over from this I can use on my other ones that are going to have to be replaced. So let me open this up and show you what we got. So here we go. Here's our duct, our insulated ducting here. Flexible ducting is inside. We're going to put this on the duct damper and I'll stretch out what I need cut it off to go out the roof. Okay, there's my exhaust vent and the opening for the duct and then that wiring running over there. So you may not be able to see very well. I got this piece of plywood spanning the joists and when I go to put this in for good, I'll have to move this plywood out of the way because I want it to run under the wiring here and under this air conditioning pipe here and through the joist and then come out up here. Pull the insulation out of the way, run it, and then throw the insulation back over it. And this silver stuff is reflective material that helps deflect and reflect the heat. And this insulation isn't too itchy. While it might be fiberglass, it hasn't been too itchy. I'm out to the coast, have a party, have some light. I've got plenty stuffed over there. I'll go back down, get this hooked in, come up here and get this cut. Can I get this finalized so we can get the roof done and be done with this project. Here's our insulation sticking through. Grab the interior duct, pull it through. Be careful not to rip the covering on this duct. Put this on, wrap it on there with a the ducting tape, and then I got some zip ties I'm gonna put around that to hold it on. I'll make sure it doesn't come off. And I'm just retaping over them zip ties to hold them in place so they don't slip. One other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some of this ducting tape in this corner over this little vent in this corner and in this corner to seal it up because I can see some daylight through there. All right, now it's time for the fan. Got little clips here and here that help hold it in and then screws on top of it. And honestly, I don't know what this little thing is, but it's kind of in the way. And you can't have it up in here because there's not enough room. So it kind of has to dangle. Hear that click? in place. Like I say, we'll just kind of set this over here, plug it in after I get the screws in, one on each side. Then we just take this plug, plug that in. Like I say, this will kind of flop up out of the way. Alrighty, now these you just squeeze together. There's a slot on each side here, on each side of the motor that it goes in. Get that in there and then you just push it up in. Okay, so we're up here on my roof as you can see. I got these two vents. This one, is for my dryer because well there's the dirt and this one is the one that all three of those exhaust fans vent to so we're going to change that on the other side for most of you this is probably going to be the scariest and hardest part because well you're on a roof fear of heights falling off all that sort of stuff two things i would say afraid of heights don't do this if you're on a two-story building and you're afraid of heights definitely don't do it and if i had a two-story house i probably wouldn't be doing this i'd pay somebody because it's too far to fall pitch your roof if you've got a very steep roof let somebody else do it that's got safety equipment and that mine's like a 512 so it's not too bad but if yours is steep i'd say find somebody else to do it as i marked how far up from this vent and how far over from this vent i wanted this new one to go and i had this blanket to sit on because well this roof's hot you may see professional roofers use like foam i need this to be 65 inches up so right in there and 16 inches over when you're putting this on think of it like this this hole's a four inch holes so you're going to have a row of shingles that go under it, under this lip. You're gonna have a row of shingles that come up and meet it, and then you're gonna have a row of shingles that come across the back. So just think of it like that. Drill only a four inch hole, it's gonna be tight to go in there. So I'm gonna drill a four and a quarter hole with my hole saw bit. I'm gonna take a utility knife and cut through the shingles around it down to the decking. I don't wanna use my drill to cut the shingles because I don't want it to catch them and rip them. Now that's where we'll drill our hole. Next thing I need to do is cut out for the sides. And basically I'm just gonna take this, use a hook blade, so I wanna cut through the one layer that I want to. Now when you drill this, you don't wanna drill like this, perpendicular. You wanna drill parallel to the roof itself because this sits with the roof. 
I put a screw in a rafter hooked to a string hooked to my duct so I could get a hold of it to bring it out. I gotta get this row and this row pried up so I can get this underneath there. And I'm gonna use this pry bar right here. And I gotta be careful. It's kind of a, a blessing and a curse that it's hot because it, it's easier to get these to pop up, but it's also easier to tear them. But the nice thing is, is it's hot and it'll glue back down when I'm done. So these are gonna go here because that fits in there like that. I had to cut it up and over just a little bit. I gotta put some nails in, tar it in, get the duct hooked up, and we'll be done. This vent does have a flapper, which is nice, so it stays closed when it's not on. It opens when it is. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, try and lift this up a little bit, put some roofing tar stuff underneath there, and then we'll set it back down. Don't get that on you, it's tough to get off. Now what we need to do, is put a few nails in. I'm just using an inch and a quarter roofing nails, try and get a couple up underneath here under the shingles i'm gonna need to put a nail in the shingle here only one there because as you saw this shingle was doing that the rest of these are good i'm gonna put a little bit around the edge to seal it up now a little on the nail heads cover those and that's it it's done okay that's all you got to do row of shingles under it row of shingles next to it row of shingles over the top now i still gotta go in the attic and get the insulation pulled up and get it all tucked up so you can see the insulation wants to droop down off the ducting you can see how it comes through the roof it's nice and tight well taped off i'm gonna just take pull this up zip ties and zip tie it to it to hold it up there that should hold it got the insulation pushed all back around fluffed up it's over the ducting can't really see it back under there is where the exhaust fan is you can't see it it's all done so before we wrap this up i want to show you one little thing these builders out to make a bucket any way they can i'm in my master bathroom it's almost twice as big as the bathroom i replaced that fan in and i'm going to show you they put the same size 50 cfm fan in here here's the cover from the one i replaced and it's the exact same size as that one can you believe that? I'll be replacing this one also with a bigger fan. But now that I've done it the first time, should be easier the second time. Supposed to be, huh? Okay, we got everything done. Ducks all hooked up. It's on the roof. See how quiet this thing is. That is very quiet. I'll turn my other one on in the master bathroom and you'll hear the difference. When the water's running in the shower, you don't even know it's on. So if all you have to do is replace the fan, meaning the opening is the same and the duct works all good, this project is very easy. You should be able to do it. Just pull out the old guts, put in the new guts, and you're done. Now, if it's not, you gotta go through what I did. It's not hard. It's just a pain in the butt and tedious because you're working in a hot attic, small space. You gotta crawl on the roof to get the project done. But you can do it. If you like watching this little repair video and you wanna see some other ones I did, click on this playlist here. Some of them are very simple. So until next time, happy DIY.